to the grassroots rugby and and the clubs back home and you know we wouldn't want that to uh, to perish just so the top level players could uh, head off yeah but what about now um i know finance seems to have been always been an issue for the all blacks board and i know you recently revealed that although you guys are the best team in the world you're paid merely 15 percent of what the english players are for a test week that blew my mind so like what are the steps that we need to take to make international rugby more equal because like you could have other players you know in new zealand just going off to france because that's where the money is um the career is so short-lived so what do you do I think it comes down to numbers, uh, bums on seats. Uh, I think if we were able to uh, pack our stadiums uh, week in, week out back home, then uh, it'd probably help bridge the gap. But um, just the, the amount of people watching the game back home uh, at the stadiums, uh, it's, it's not, not, not uh, as similar as the numbers that we have over here. So, um, yeah, I, I think we have the population in New Zealand to be able to do that. But if there are other ways, uh, other avenues that they were able to bridge the gap, then I'm sure they'll be able, to, they'll, they'll be looking at those. But uh, as it sits right now, it's just it is what it is, and, and guys are just enjoying playing their rugby and playing for for the countries. I think, Christine, I think most countries don't earn as much as England. I think their, machine, yeah. their machine is much bigger, yeah? You know, countries like New <laughs> Zealand and Wales. Exactly. The machine is a <clears throat> completely different machine, completely <clears throat> different animal, you know? Is it, and, uh, is, it a, is it the different approach as well? Like, I remember um, a friend of mine was from New Zealand, and she was saying, it's not about the money. It's, it's about the pride of pulling on that jersey. And I know it's the same for all the other nations, but does it maybe it's a little bit more, you know, it matters a bit more over in, in New Zealand. Like, the All Blacks jersey is so special. No, we're, where we are in New Zealand, we're quite fortunate. Um, <clears throat> we don't really put money into it. Like We're quite fortunate to be able to be in the position to be a professional sports person. Uh, and the All Blacks are definitely the uh, number one team in New Zealand. And to be called an All Black and to be in that environment, it's a, it's a huge privilege. And, um, and if you were in that situation and then come out and start complaining about money, it's, it's quite a... It's not a good thing. You wouldn't so, dare. Uh, you wouldn't dare do that. <clears throat> no, for us to, yeah. to be in that privileged position, it's. Uh, I think for for most guys, it's. Uh, it's more than enough. Mm. <clears throat> I think you'll find that be the same for most test players around the world, Christina, mm. as well. You know, you know, you get the privilege of playing for your country. It, it doesn't matter how much money you earn to do it. Mm. It's a huge honour, and you know, you you never complain about how much money money you earn doing it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Obviously, I am I am not an international, so um, yeah, I can't relate. But no, I think that does make sense. It's the, it's the pride of your country above everything else. Um, but look, since you left now, the All Blacks have struggled to get a settled number six. Um, now, we think they may have finally found a replacement in Akira Ione. So what do you make of him as a player? Oh, man, he's... Um... He's X Factor on X Factor, that kid. He's um, he's like his brother, Rico. They're both really quick, but um, I remember back in 2000 and I think it was 2016, 15, when he played his debut for the Blues and he's just burning backs on the outside and uh, I, he could still do that right now. So, um, yeah, I definitely hope that he gets uh, gets into that All Black um, team and uh, just... Uh, gets comfortable because uh, once he gets comfortable in that environment and comfortable at, at test level, I'm sure he'll be able to show the world what he's capable of. Who are the top three flankers in world rugby today, in your opinion? Top three? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no, Kano's on the shortlist. Oof. European shortlist. Uh, who I really enjoy uh, watching play, loose forwards, I'd say um, Adi Sevier. Uh, Justin Tupperick, he's uh, he's I, I love watching that guy play, and um, it'll have to be oh, I'm gonna have to pick four here. I'm gonna go Sam Simmons and Gregory Aldrit here in France. Fair enough. I thought you, I was, I thought you were gonna say, and myself. Um, I was because I was gonna do that. Oh, like, he's, he's the most no humble man in the world. He's do you know what I'm looking forward to this weekend? Is is Big Joe Takori fit? Yep, he's fit. He's fit. I do you know what I, I want to see a collision between him and Will Skelton this weekend. <laughs> I am looking forward to it. I think I was watching Will Skelton play against Leinster, 
Oh. And he he ran into about four blokes and still yeah. made about five meters. Right? And that's against Leinster. That's against Leinster, who are yeah. renowned for their physicality. Mm. Big Joe Takori as well cuts a line off nine and can yeah. cause serious damage. So I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for it. I'm looking forward to it massively. Yeah, I think Will's one of the many big bodies they have in their lower shell side. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be some big collisions. Tackle practice this week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, now, look, I have to ask you this question, and we ask every single guest that comes on the podcast, um, but can you give us an insight into the initiation of an All Black? Oof. And so, it's and just it, the three it, of us here. It's just a circle of trust. No, there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing too um, too out there that I can't say on here, but... Um, yeah, there are a lot of like traditional um, initiations that come in. You obviously have to, when you first know, like the first week we have a team meeting and you have to get up there and speak on um, your journey and what, uh, what, what, you, what you're grateful for and how, how you got there. But um, yeah, obviously you get an All Black book, which uh, shows your journey, your path to the All Black team. And, and then the back bit of the book is empty and that's... Uh, that's a chance for you to to write your history in the uh, in the All Black legacy and what you want to do and what you're grateful for and those those bits. But in terms of out there uh, initiations, there there aren't many. I think for new players coming into the All Black environment, the most important thing is knowing where your place is on the bus, <laughs> <laughs> the up front by the driver or next to the coaches. So what is the story? Do you have to, as like a new player, do you sit at the front and then the more senior sits to the back or? Yeah, yeah, the older players sit at the back. So um, sometimes there aren't enough seats on the bus. So straight after a morning meeting before training, there's a massive sprint to, to the bus. And if we're on the top level, uh, if the meeting room's on the top level, you better take the stairs and don't wait for the lift. Otherwise, you're going to be standing up on the way to training or wherever we're going. Mate, were you back in centre? Yeah, I was back. Yeah, of course you were, <laughs> mate. Of course you were. And did any make any instances of any young lads trying to fight their way back or being a bit above their station? Not in like, my hang time. Hang on a minute. What are you doing something there? You've only been involved a year. No, not in my time. But uh, no. old, um, Kieran Reed and Owen Franks, they were the they were the enforcers of the back seat. They they made sure their guys went too far back. And look, you must have had some amazing nights out over the years, especially after those two World Cup victories. But if you had to pick the best night out you've ever had in rugby, what would it be and why? The best night out in rugby? Ooh. I'd say after the 2011 World Cup um, in New Zealand, uh, just, well, just seeing uh, everyone around town still pack, packed in the streets and just... Uh, I think it was more the relief that we, we were able to win, but um, just, uh, just the happiness that we were able to bring to, to everyone, which was a, that was, a, uh, that was a, a good night. I must be another level. I mean, winning a World Cup in your home country as well. I yeah. know the final was proper nerve-wracking for you boys, isn't it? Yeah. Jeez, uh, the old beaver came on and slotted the kick. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, to win, uh, I can only imagine that feeling. Yeah. Mm. to like you know well your whole country at home all blacks win in new zealand should have been wales in the final but we won't talk yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah when you when you're in those uh tournaments or when you're in the world cup you're sometimes you're stuck in your bubble and you're not really uh you're not really privy to what's happening outside and then after the final we drove back to the hotel and we always walked into uh walked down the street and just still seeing people with their flags and just packed packed out on the main road it was uh it was quite special and it's quite cool to experience 